Hi, hey Russ here. Welcome back to my shop. Uh, today I want to talk about my workbench. Um, like most of my videos, you've probably never seen anything quite like this. Um, but what I basically have here is I took an old antique desk that I've had for 35 years and uh, it was worth about $500 at this point, I'd say. Um, anyway, it's uh, it's 400 years old. It's really a classic desk, but when I bought it, I've actually moved probably 12 times, and I've lugged this desk around with me. I had to have it because most of the time I was uh, uh, self-employed and I had a home office, and so I had to have a good desk, and I liked this desk a lot for that. My kids hated it because every time I moved it, guess who had to help me move it? Yeah, they did. That was just one of my ways of getting even with my kids had, now that they've grown up. So anyway. I decided to turn this antique $500 desk into my workbench. So hence, I have a $200 workbench from a $500 antique desk. Now who else do you know that can make that claim? So anyway, um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about it, why I did what I did, and why I really like it. And then I think you'll understand it. So let's start with how what I did to change it. When I got it, it has eight of these legs on it. It's a two pedestal desk with three drawers on this side and two drawers on this side. And it had these legs on it. Across the back, that whole frame back there goes from pedestal to pedestal. And so on the back, they had a pedestal on each corner. And on the front, they had a pedestal, uh, had a leg, not a pedestal. On each pedestal in the front, they put a leg at each corner here. This had to be open for your leg, so they had to support this corner a little bit more. So there were six legs on it. it wasn't very good. These are really weak and they really had a lot of problems. So after I decided about uh, a year or so ago that I was going to use this and make another workbench, uh, this is probably be my fifth workbench that I've made. And I think so far it's, it's going to be my favorite by far. Uh, but I got rid of these. And what I did is I went to a box under each pedestal and I built it up so that when I got done, my table height is the same as on my table saw. And on the bottom, at four on each pedestal, I put little levelers on it, just homemade. Uh, carriage bolt, three-eighths carriage bolt with a hexagon-shaped piece of wood. And I screwed that up underneath with a T-nut under there at all eight points. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Here's my official schematic of the thing. And what it, okay, the black is the frame and the pedestals of this thing. And what I did was um, I put a three inch two by four all the way around it, leveled everything off. Then I put a piece of MDF on there, three quarter inch and attached it. Then I drilled dog holes on this outer lip, which is three inches wide and I drilled dog holes in there all the way around, except for right here, which is this area. So, and I did that so that I could still use this as a desk area if I want. Now, underneath the pink is where I put my levelers. So there's four on this pedestal and four on this pedestal. And the reason I did that is twofold. Uh, I figured out pretty quickly that having eight points of contact makes this desk a lot sturdier and stay put much, much easier and much more sturdy having uh, eight points instead of, of four, I'll tell you. And also it helps keep my top perfectly flat and I can level this thing perfect. So w the way I do that is I take the four outer ones, uh, well actually I screw them all up real high, I move the desk where I want it, and then I start screwing the four outer ones up until with a level I get this thing perfectly leveled and at the height that I want. <clears throat> then once I've done that, then I take the four inner ones, take a piece of paper and stick it underneath the inner ones one at a time, and I turn them down until they make contact with the paper. Then I take the paper out and I turn it exactly one revolution. That raises it enough that it puts some of the pressure that's on there pretty close to equal on the four inner ones. And that allows me that eight point contact to make this desk much sturdier and to stay put much easier uh, by doing that. And again, I'm pretty sure it'll stay a lot flatter as a result. So now 
I can take this desk, and quite honestly, if I take that screw there, how many people can do with their desk? You can take a hammer. Did you see it move? I wasn't watching, but then I got my mind there. It didn't move, and it certainly didn't fall over. So that is how sturdy this desk is. Uh, there's no vibration to it. So when I have my tools laying on here, and I'm pounding on the desk, on this bench over here, those tools don't do a walking. I don't have that happen here in my shop. I've never had it happen off of this desk. I've never knocked, any, I've knocked them off, but I've never had anything peek to the edge and fall off. So it's, I think this desk is going to be a complete success because that's really what's important to me is being dead flat and stay put right where it is and not move on me. And so far, this thing has more than lived up to that reputation. So now that I got the pedestal on here, the other thing I like about this desk is you got a lot of really big drawers in it. And uh, it also has a return on each side. And so I took the returns out and I made this one with a cutting board in it. And this one has a rubber mat in it. And what makes these drawers, this desk unique is that if I pull out the top drawer, well, first off, if I pull out this out here, it's like a springboard or a diving board, bouncy. But they designed this desk, and when you pull this out, the area, let me turn this down just a hair, the area right here raises up against here. And this is higher than this area in here. So what happens is you pull the return out and it makes contact out here. So now all of a sudden this thing is fully supported and there's no spring anymore. So it really makes this thing nice and solid. But these are very handy on my bench. It gives me a place to take stuff and throw it on there real quick to clear my bench area like tools. So it's better than a tool well because I also can get rid of it. Uh, but also it gives me a quick place to cut or do things. Like I said, this one has a rubber pad on it. So non-skid, so I can put something on there and it'll kind of stay put. And so the bottom side of both of them are wood. So if I take it out all the way, I can take this out and put it up on my bench and use it and then put it right back. Um, and if I want, I can use the bottom side to drill on and make a mess on and pound on and so I don't damage my top of my bench. So these are actually very nice to have these returns on here and they work really well. So that makes this a really great uh, workbench. The drawers are really deep. They go back quite a ways. So I'll be able to put a lot of tools once I get to doing the drawers. I think I'll be able to do a lot with those. So the only thing I don't have is a vise on it yet. I'm still working on that idea. I have a face vise over there that I used to use. And I think I figured out how to mount it on here. And once I do that, I'll show it to you. So anyway, as far as the top goes, I drilled all those dog holes in here, all the way around, except here, so that I had a place to put all my tools and utilities. Instead of cluttering up my desktop, I now can take and I make little boxes and I stick them on dowels as needed so that I can take and actually stick this anywhere. This has all my extra tape measures in it and I can drop that in any hole anywhere and it just stays right here out of my way and if I'm going to use this area I can then take and move this someplace still accessible but out of my way so dog holes are actually very handy <clears throat> to use not just for holding things down but for other things so I make these things by the dozen at different lengths some of them I put a little notch on it to use it that way, and most of them are just round knobs that I don't do much with. On my dog holes, I talked about, I put little set screws in each one of them. And I made a little Allen key here, Allen wrench, that uh, using a three quarter inch dowel, so I can just set it anywhere while I'm using it. And it goes into that little set screw, so I can take, drop that in there exactly where I want it, turn that in to snug it, whoops. And there we go. And now that thing will stay exactly where I have it. So 
I can put a dog hole anywhere and lock it down. And sometimes that's very handy to have that capability. So the dog holes are multifunction and they're, uh, they hold a lot of different types of things on my bench. And yet I can take everything off this bench in two or three minutes and have a clear top completely. Pull my tool, my mini bench off and I have a clear top to put a piece of plywood up here and cut it. So it makes it easy and quick to use this bench from any corner or any side or all the whole surface all at once if I want. So, uh, that's my workbench. Um, it's a work in progress. As I do more to it, I'll uh, show that to you. But I just thought maybe I'd share it with you how it sets up now and how I'm using it and where it's going. Uh, if you have any questions about it, you know, just leave comments below. But I think it's going to work out real well. And I think pretty quickly here, I'll show you a full shop tour. Now that you've seen some of the components of it, my legacy, my table saw set up, my vacuum. Now that you've seen all those things, uh, I'll give you a full tour and you'll get an idea how this all comes together. So there is method to my madness, as they say. So uh, I want to thank you for stopping by. Please leave comments. I'd love to read them. Uh, and if you like this video, say so. But most importantly, please come back again because there's a lot more to go. Thanks. We'll see you soon. Bye.